Shalom, Mubarak, Mispaka, peace and blessings, family. In this video, we're going to be mining deep in the earth for wisdom. Wisdom, she is more precious than gold and rubies. Why? Because you got to dig a little bit more deep to find wisdom than, in, than you do to find precious metals and jewels. So here we go. We're going to um, hop into the stuff. We're going to look at the prophecies and see how they will apply for today and how they will apply for the future. The prophecies in scripture are out of order. They are random at times, and it is up to you to know how to put them together. So, but we're gonna start in the book of Daniel chapter eight. Uh, we're talking about the Greek empire here it's in verse 11, let's go. Yeah, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host. So that means he magnified himself even to the Allahim, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away and the place of his sanctuary was cast down right the place of Yah's sanctuary was cast down by the greeks and it says and a host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression and it cast down the truth to the ground and practice and it's prospered in verse 13 it says then I heard one saint speaking to another saint and said unto that certain saint which spoke, How long shall the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? So now it's being asked, How long will these Greeks trod down the holy people and the holy place? See, the sanctuary in Hebrew in this verse is not the normal word for sanctuary. In this verse, it means it's kadush. Kadush means holy. So the holy, the holy things. How long will the holy things be trodden underfoot? How long would it be? How long would it be? How long would it be suppressed? How long would it be hidden? How long will the holy place, the holy people, the holy things, and says and the host, so and the holy people. How long will it be? trodden underfoot and he said unto me unto 2300 days then shall the sanctuary be cleansed now again sanctuary means the holy things all the holy things shall be cleansed the holy place the holy city and the holy people will be cleansed but obviously it's not 2300 days because we know after the greeks conquered uh jerusalem 2300 days later which is only a few years you know, we wasn't just back to normal. Because after the Greeks conquered Jerusalem, that's when Israel fell permanently. That's when Israel fell permanently. And no, we wasn't in power in no 70 AD. That, that wasn't us. That was the Idumeans. But, uh... Yeah, just in general, in general, um... 2,300 days should actually say 2,300 years. So don't quote me on this, but according to history, according to the history that we're giving, Alexander the Great conquered Jerusalem in 332 BC. That means that was 2,353 years ago. Meaning we are now living in the 2300 day. So before we live in the 2400 day, we will be gathered and we will be saved out of this captivity and we will be cleansed. So that's within the next 47 years. That's within the next 47 years. Now, don't quote me, old Chief Moore saying we're going to be delivered in 47 years. Now, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying according to what scripture gives me and according to what modern history tells me, that's what I'm getting at, yeah. That's basically when you put that together, yeah. But uh, let's let's keep going. And, and the rough goat is the king of Grecia. So, yeah, we was talking about the Greek empire the whole time. And it says... The great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. That's Alexander the Great, right? Now, first of all, first of all, first of all, I know what you're thinking. This guy claims Israel is in America, but 
the Greeks conquered Jerusalem. How does that even work? Well, first of all, the Greeks did indeed come to America. And even the his historians will tell you that it's not even conspiracy theories. They say that the Greeks came to Canada in 56 AD. However, I think personally that it was much earlier, 332 BC is when Alexander the Great conquered Jerusalem, is when Alexander the Great came to America. And that's why you can find uh, pictures of Alexander the Great on coins and stones within the Burroughs Cave, Illinois. And that's why you can find a lot of Greek influence in America. There is many, many artifacts of Greek and Roman artifacts all throughout North America. In fact, see the Lost Lunar Stone, which is the oldest Ten Commandments in Paleo Hebrew that we have available today. It only it had to be written way after the time of Moses, around the time of Joel, even after the Babylonian captivity. That is so it's not that old, actually. It had to be written after Alexander conquered Jerusalem because in the Lost Lunar Stone, there is a few Greek letters, which shows that the Greeks had influence to the American Indians, who obviously was not called Indians at the time. They were the Hebrews, but the Greeks came over to the America. That's why in the book of Mal in the book of Maccabees, it says specifically Alexander the Great conquered the earth and all nations feared him he conquered from sea to sea and it says that in Mac maccabees so that's the americas too and we see that clearly um but look at this verse 22 now that being broken whereas four stood up from it four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation but not in his power so it says four kingdoms will come out of Greece. So first of all, there's Greece, then it's Rome, then it's the Holy Roman Empire, then it's the U.S. And the U.S., what's going on now in history? The U.S. is not the U.S. anymore. Now it's becoming a world, uh, one world government. We're, we're seeing a one world government rise up right now. All right. And um, it says, and in the latter time of their kingdom, that's around when the one world government comes. It says, when the transgressors are come to a fool, the king, a king of fierce countenance and understanding of dark sentences. So a man full of uh, hidden wisdom and knowledge, it says, shall stand up and his power shall be mighty. So there's going to be an ambassador slash king slash president slash dictator, whatever you want to call him. He's going to find a, He's going to rule over the U.S. in the future. All right. This is a future prophecy. And I'm telling you right now, we're going to have a president slash ambassador slash whatever slash king, whatever. And this man is going to be a crazy man. Look, it says a man of fierce countenance, understanding of dark sinners shall stand up and his power shall be mighty, but not of his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. He will destroy the holy people. And it says, and through his policy also, so he's going to have rules and regulations. He shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. You see these people that rule over us. They, 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 their craft already prosper in their hand. What kind of craft? Their witchcraft, their pharmaceutical, their pharmaceutical medications prosper in their hands, killing people. Uh, you know, they have all kinds of craft. They got the atomic bomb, the nuclear bomb, the hydrogen bomb. They got all kinds of tanks. They got all kinds of grenades and missiles. They got all kinds of, you know, ways to kill people. In fact, most of their innovation and creativity went specifically into killing people. <laughs> that's the people we're dealing with here and that's the craft that's prospering in their hand and you see this magic potion that they're trying to get you to take is killing people and that's what they're trying to do especially you children of israel they're trying to really get rid of you and uh lower your population first you know the pharaoh said let's throw the baby boys into the streams now what they're saying is oh Let's put a magic potion in their bloodstream so they can't have baby boys. So that's what's going on.
and he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many and he also shall stand up against the prince of princes but he shall be broken without hand so this king is going to stand up against david and david is going to kill him immediately he's going to just put him down like man i don't got time for this foolishness and kill him just like that david's going to come back whenever you see this man this king this president whenever you see him that's when you know david's going to come back the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30 and 3. For lo, the days come, saith Yah, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Yehuda, saith Yah, and I will cause them to return to the land of their fathers, and they shall possess it. You see this? Even in the Babylonian captivity, this is when Yah said it. We were still in the Babylonian captivity. Yah already said, you know, I'm going to bring again the captivity of Israel because I said they was going to be in Babylon for 70 years and they're still wicked, even in captivity. And, you know, I, I, I can't allow this. I'm going to put them in a, a type of captivity. This is a different kind of type of captivity that I never tried before. And this this captivity is really going to make them think and reflect on the wickedness that they're doing. Why is this a different type of captivity? Because the people who rule over us are not even people. Look what it says. Behold, the days come, saith Yahuwah, that I will sow the house of Yasserol and the house of Yehuda with the seed of man and with the seed of beast. We know a beast is an animal. How is we gonna be how are we gonna be mixed with an animal? Well, you know, these people who rule over us have a high amount of Neanderthal DNA, and they mix with us during slavery in great numbers by raping our women and pimping our women. You know, the first pimps were these people and we're willingly pimping our women to this day. That's, that's kind of weird when you think about it, you know, in strip clubs, that's kind of weird too. You know, you, you, you're, you're paying, throwing money at strippers who are also your people when literally the white man was doing the same thing. So that's, you know, it's kind of weird. But uh, anyway, yeah, it's the same thing, man. Um, we were mixed with this beast. You see that? And that's why we got a lot of his ways even to this day. And it says, verse 28, and it shall come to pass that like I have watched over them to pluck up and to break down and to throw down and to destroy and to afflict. I will also watch over them to build and to plant, saith Yah. So Yah said, even though they mix with this beast, I'm still going to choose them. I'm still going to build with them. That's how much he loves us. Yeah, don't you see that, that great love that Yah has for us? Now, that correlates to Deuteronomy 32 when Deuteronomy 32 says, um, basically, since you want to drive me to jealousy with that which is not God, I'm going to drive you to jealousy with those that are not even a people. And that's what we see today. These are not even a people. This is a subhumanoid species. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 29 and verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith Yah, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. So Ye Yahuwah says to us. Look, even though you're in captivity, man, I have thoughts of peace towards you, man. I, I just want I, I just want the best for you, man. That's basically what he's saying. Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and hearken, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me, when you search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith Yahuwah, and I will turn away your captivity. And I will gather you from all the nations and all the places, whither I have driven you, saith Yah. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. So do you see this? Y Yah is going to bring us out of captivity. He's going to give us an expected end. You understand that? But we have to seek him with all our heart. Some Israelites are just doing Ten Commandments and just walking around. Oh, yay. I'm just doing Ten Commandments. And I'm, I'm seeking them all. No, that's not seeking them all your heart. You got to do everything y'all told you to do with, to, the, to the best of your ability. That's how you do it with all your might. You, you lazy. You don't even want to open up the book past Exodus 20. You don't even want to open up the book past Exodus 20, man. Open up the book and open up your mind, open up your body and open up your soul. If you don't open up your soul and you don't open up your mind, how is y'all going to feel his spirit within you? Come on, man. And, and you got to, you got to, come on, man. You got to keep these, t these tour laws, bro, for real. Now, anyway, let's keep digging. Keep digging. 
Jeremiah 30 and verse 8. For it shall come to pass in that day, said Yahuwah Zabawut, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck and burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve Yah their Allah, and Dawid their Malak, and whom I will raise up unto them. So Yah is going to break our bonds, right? He's going to break the yoke from off our neck, right? And, and that's what's going to happen, man. We'll no more serve these people, right? Ain't, ain't, you, ain't you ready for that day where you're not paying tribute to the oppressor simply to drink water and bathe? Ain't you ready for that to be, you know? Zechariah chapter 10, verse 10. And I will bring them again also out of the land of Egypt and gather them out of Assyria. And I will bring them into the land of Gilead and Lebanon and place shall not be found from them. So, so and place shall not be found for them. So this is the Exodus. OK, this is the Exodus. We're finally getting out of the captivity, We're going into the Exodus, going to the wilderness. And what does y'all say? He's going to bring them out of Mizraim and out of Assyria. So... Did it say he's going to bring us out of mystery Babylon? Did it say he's going to bring us out of America with three K's? Did it say he's going to bring us out of Osirath, a land that no one knew? No, he said he's going to bring us out of MFing Mizraim and Syria. All right. The majority of Israelites are in those two nations because those two nations are in the U.S. Period. And it says, I will bring them to Gilead. Where's the real Gilead? Gilead mean rocky region. That's the Rocky Mountains, my, my brother. We're going to be passing through that land, absorbing the beauty of that area. And then we're going to pass to Lebanon, which is Northern California and Western Oregon. And we're going to look at the beautiful, beautiful Mount Hermon Western, which is the most beautiful Mount Rainier. And we're going to be looking at Mount Shasta and we're going to be absorbing the beauty of that area as well but we're not going to have a place found for us because we're not going to be in jerusalem yet we're going to be wandering through the land you understand we're going to be wandering through the land but how are we going to get to the land it says in verse 11 and he shall pass through the sea with affliction he shall smite the waves of the sea and all the depths of the river shall dry up and the pride of assyria shall be brought down and the scepter of egypt shall depart away so he's going to dry up the river and how he's going to dry up the river. He's going to smite the waves. You know, a hurricane can be powerful enough to suck the water out of the Mississippi River. And it happens, you know, I think it happened during Hurricane Laura recently. Actually, he sucked the water up out of the river. And, it, and then it made it flow backwards. Ain't that crazy? It made it flow backwards. It made it flow uphill. Y'all can do that. He will do it. And uh, with that being said, with when, when, the, when the Mississippi River, a.k.a. the Euphrates River, dries up, the pride of Assyria and the sept of Egypt will depart away. It's going to be dry. It's going to be a major water shortage, is what you got to understand it. And, and, and it's gonna get deep. We're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep going. You're gonna see what I mean. When that when those rivers dry up, we're gonna pass through. We're gonna walk from Assyria into the Holy Land, people. This is the wilderness. It says Jeremiah 50 and verse 5. And they shall ask the way to Zion with their faces did the word, saying, Come and let us join ourselves to Yah. In a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. As you see, we're looking for Zion, but we know where it's at, but we're just asking the way to it. Like, can we go there? Because we're going to be in that wilderness for a while, probably 40 years or longer. And uh, we're just going to be just walking, you know, through, through the land. The book of Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that Yah will set his hand again the second time. To recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Mystery Babylon and from America with three K's and from Osirith 
and from um imaginary place that we didn't know about but we randomly went there because y'all never told us we would go there but we just went there no it said from pathros and from kush and from elam and from shinar and from hamath and from the islands of the sea y'all told us specifically where we would be in the final captivity he told us specifically where we would be and that's where we are did he lie no he did not we are literally in these areas if you Google all these areas, it's going to say it's in the Middle East, near Saudi Arabia, Iraq, and Iran. But you can tell that we're not in those areas. We're in the Americas, and that's where these areas are, period, point blank. And then verse 12, it says, And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcast of Yasserah, and gather together the dispersed of Yehuda from the four corners of the earth. Who's that ensign of the nation? That's David. David is the Messiah. He's going to be the one to initiate the gathering of the people. He's going to have so much authority that he's going to have all media coverage. They're going to try to suppress him, but they won't be able to because he's going to be so powerful. And David's going to be like, now I need all Israelites from the UK. I need all Israelites who brought themselves to fake Israel. I need all Israelites from Ghana, Nigeria, and all this, the coast of Kush, all Israelites from South America, all Israelites from Mexico, all Israelites from the US, and all Israelites from wherever else they have been scattered to come in this specific area. That's what David's gonna do. And by him doing that, everybody's gonna obey, but they're gonna be so mad because this is gonna single-handedly collapse economies. Because when millions of people just up and leave out of one economy at one time, you're going to be having a lot of people who are not going to be doing their jobs anymore. Inflation is going to go through the roof. It's going to be like a Great Depression across the world. And it's going to ruin, you know, eco e economies. And they're going to be mad. Kings are going to be mad at, at David. But they're not going to have any power in their hand against David. But look what it say right here in verse 15. This is how. This is how. This is how the Israelites are going to walk from Assyria and from Egypt into the land. It says, And Yahuwah shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Mizraim sea. And with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river and shall smite it in the seven streams and make men go over dry shod. Two things in the scripture shows that this ain't the Middle East. Number one. The Egyptian Sea in the Middle East is the Red Sea, right? But the river of Egypt does not flow into the Red Sea. So therefore, the, the river of Egypt is not the tongue of the Egyptian Sea in the Middle East. Actually, the, the, the river of Egypt in the Middle East, aka the Nile, flows into the Mediterranean, which was called the Great Sea in Scripture, never the Egyptian Sea. Also, what you got to understand is... Um, It says he will smite the river in the seven streams. The Nile River does not have seven streams, but the Mississippi River does. Okay. And he will make men go over dry shards. So y'all is literally going to dry this river up just so the children of Israel can walk over the river and get into the land. You see that? But wait, that would mean Israel is in Egypt and Assyria. The literal Egypt and Assyria. Oh, what people are gonna say? No, brother, that's the spiritual Egypt. You see, it's not the literal Egypt. It's not the literal Syria. It's the spiritual Egypt and Syria. My question is, what scripture says that, bro? Deuteronomy 4 and 2, you should not add unto the word which I give you. You are adding to the word by saying it's the spiritual Egypt. No, Y'all did not say he would send us to the spiritual Egypt. He said he would send us to Egypt, period, point blank. No such thing as a spiritual Egypt. Stop adding to the word. Just listen to what y'all says. And then it says in verse 16, And there shall be a highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was in Israel on the day that they came up out of the land of Mizraim. So that means his people are literally going to be coming from Assyria. Come on now. The book of Isaiah chapter 19 and verse 23. And in that day there shall be a highway out of Mizraim to Assyria. And the Assyrian shall come into Mizraim and the misery into Assyria. And the misery shall serve with the Assyrians. So what do we see here? This is while the, you know, the captivities are still running. 
while the empires are still flourishing. It says there will be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria and they will go into each other. They'll, the Assyrian will go into Egypt, the, Assyrian, the Egyptian will go into Assyria. We see that. Um, could that be, when it says Egyptian, could that be, you know, Egyptian by citizenship? Like Israelites who live in Egypt and, and Israelites who live in Assyria, they're just being called Assyrians or called Egyptians, possibly. And, and guess what? Um, that's today, guys. That's today. Today in Egypt and in Assyria, there is a highway that has two sides, east and west bound, that people can go freely from Egypt to Assyria and from Assyria to Egypt. You know what this highway is called? It's called Interstate 10. Interstate 10. You see that? And Interstate 10, its purpose is to cross the Mississippi River. That's one of its purposes. But when y'all utterly uh, afflicts the waves, he's probably going to send a new tsunami and break that bridge. And we're not going to be able to cross to get out of the land. And see, what's going to happen is we're going to have to go over the river and y'all is going to dry the river and we're going to be able to walk through it. So that's a, that's a crazy thing about it. You got to think um, there's no highway in the Middle East and there could be no highway in the Middle East from Egypt to Assyria because there's a Suez Canal by the Red Sea. So, uh, you know, that don't make sense. Stop. Stop believing that's the land. Just it's dumb. Just stop, bro. Just, just give in. Just give in to the truth that this is the land. Just it's time, bro. You take this as a sign, bro. It ass. Anyway, let's move on. Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 34. And I will bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries wherein you were scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched forth arm and with fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people and there will I plead with you face to face. Like as I plead with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Mizraim, so will I plead with you, saith Yah Allah. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant, and I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me, and I will bring forth out of the country where you where they sojourn, and they will not enter into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am Yahuwah. So this is the first thing you got to understand. Y'all is going to bring us into the Exodus, into the wilderness. This is the second Exodus 2.0. But you got to understand this. All of us are going to be in the wilderness. Crackhead Bobby down the street is going to be in the wilderness. Your cousin that you try to tell about the truth two years ago, but he didn't listen. He also going to be in the wilderness with you. All the people, every single one of them, every Israelite is going to be in the Exodus. Are they all going to uh, hearken? No, but they're going to be given a second chance. Y'all is going to be at, y'all is going to be with them. Y'all is going to send Elijah and Elijah is going to tell them. He's going to let them know. Hey, man. Look, this is the rules, this is the regulation, this is the Torah, and this is what you got to keep. And, you know, they might not keep it. And he's going to purge them out, and they will die, and they will burn. They will burn, you know. So don't feel too bad about your family not getting the truth, because they're going to give us, they're going to be given a second chance. That's why y'all is better than JC. JC doesn't give second chances. JC say, if you die not believing in me, you'll just burn the hell for all eternity. However, like I said, y'all give us chances over chances over chances. Even when you die, you come back to this earth and you get another chance. Like y'all are so, so merciful, more merciful than JC. You know, JC said he forgive you 70 over seven times. Lie, stop capping, JC. You capping. Only y'all is that forgiving. Now, nobody on this planet is more forgiving than y'all himself, bro. Just stop. Get yourself off that pedestal and go back on the cross. The book of Jeremiah 31, verse 31. Behold, the days come, saith Yah, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Yasserah and with the house of Yehuda. So Yah is going to make a new covenant with us. And in this covenant, we're not going to be able to sin. It's going to be, you know, just like we're not able to make our heart stop beating. That's, that's by default. It's just going to be by default. We're not going to be able to sin. It's going to be in our nature now to keep the Yah's laws and be righteous. That's, that's, that's crazy what it is. If you keep on reading down, that's what it says. Malachi chapter 4. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and dreadful day of Yah. So he's going to send Elijah back in the Exodus because Elijah is going to be the one to bring us back under the covenant. I'm going to show you. Elijah is going to be one to teach righteousness to us again. 
and he has to teach us this righteousness again to give us another chance before we just burn and die on the day of Yah. And look what it says in verse 6. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. So Elijah is going to be the one to turn us back to the covenant, just like Moses was the one to turn us to the first covenant. Elijah is going to be the one to turn us to the second covenant. It says, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse, because Elijah has to do this before he come and smite the earth with a curse. And that, what curse is that? Everything going to be burnt up. The book of Joel, chapter 3, and verse 2. And now we're out of wilderness, and we finally made it to Jerusalem. And this is what it says. And I will gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Now, the valley of Jehoshaphat is Jerusalem. Jerusalem has many names. Jerusalem, a.k.a. Salem, a.k.a. the city of the Jebusite, a.k.a. Uh, Ariel, a.k.a. the city of David, a.k.a. Zion. Jerusalem has many, many, many names, right? So, with that being said, the Valley of Jehoshaphat is just another name for Jerusalem. Well, see, Jerusalem was within the Valley of Jehoshaphat because Jerusalem was a city inside of a valley. But the Valley of Jehoshaphat is the entire valley. And that includes, you know, the Mountain of Olives and the Mountain on the West as well. So, it wasn't just Jerusalem. It's a huge area within the circular valley. And it's big enough to fit millions of people. Now, anyway, it says, I will gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Yasserah, whom they have scattered among the nations and part of my land. It says, he will, Yah will plead with them. Yah is judging these people. He's saying, either you are going to serve my people or you are going to perish. Or you are going to cleave unto my people and do what we say. And you already know it's going to be some madness. The majority of them are not going to want to cleave to us. Why? Because, first of all, ain't no more Christmas. Ain't no more Thanksgiving. Ain't no more JC. Oh, my God. Ain't no more pork chops. Bro, them heathens feel like their rights get taken away with anything you tell them they can't do. And you already know, when the heathen feel like their rights get taken away, they get wild. And they will get robbed. So their choice is, is to cleave unto Israel and be one with the Israelites or be a servant. And they're like, man, I ain't finna be no servant either. So they mad. And they say, oh, your other option is to die. And you know dang well they gonna wanna fight before they die. These other nations, it's gonna be they gonna be riled up. They gonna be riled up. Now let's look at this. It says, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. How are they parted? How are they parted y'all's land? They call it Utah, Nevada, California. They call it Idaho. They call it Oregon. They call it New Mexico. They call it Colorado. Man, they gave it all them states and stuff. That's parting the land. That's dividing the land. You know, modern Israel not divided. It's not parted. <laughs> you know, only only the Western and North America is parted. The book of Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 1. The hand of Yahuwah was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of Yah and set me down in the midst of a valley which was full of bones. Watch this valley be the valley of Jehoshaphat, man. This is the same valley. All right, anyway, let's look. It says... Verse 7 says, And I prophesied as I was commanded, I prophesied, and there was a noise, and behold, shaking, and the bones came upon together, and bone to his bone. And when I beheld, the sunus and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. And then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, say unto the wind, Thus saith Ya Allah, come from the four winds, o, o breath, and breathe upon the slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Yasserah. Behold, they say our bones are dried, our hope is lost, we are cut off from our parts. Prophesy unto them, Thus saith Yahuwah Allah, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to be and cause you to come out of your graves and bring you into the land of Yasserah. Now understand this. This is a symbolic prophecy about our ancestors 
uh, specifically the house of David and the governors of Yehuda rising up out of their graves and becoming more than a man and more of an angel and burning everything up around them. They're standing up like a great army. It's a symbolic foreshadowing of what's going to happen. And I'm going to show you exactly what's going to happen with other scriptures. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 51 and verse 20. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider, and with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. And with thee will I break in pieces man and woman. And with thee will I break in pieces old and young. And with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. And with thee will I break in pieces the shepherd and his flock. And with thee will I break in pieces the husband man and the yoke of oxen. And with thee will I break in pieces captains and rulers. So do you see this man? This is y'all saying that the children of Israel will be his weapon. So when Yah comes and it says he will come with his sword, who is his sword? We are going to be the ones doing the destruction. Yah is going to be orchestrating it. The book of Isaiah 54 and 16. Behold, I created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritance of the servants of Yahuwah, and their righteousness is of me, saith Yah. So look at this. This is this this is what you gotta understand. Um people use the scripture in church all the time. Like, no, no, I know like three people who, who go to church all the time that then got shot. Like, nah, nah, this don't apply to you, my brother. This applies to this is a future prophecy first of all it doesn't apply to it doesn't even apply to me the children of israel in the future in the valley of jehoshaphat fighting against these nations all right and and not just that these nations are going to fight back they're going to have their tank the ar-15s and that's just the least you know they're also going to be bringing their hydrogen atomic and nuclear bombs they're going to bring all the stuff to, to fight against us. You, they know that David is a man of power. So they're going to be like, just bomb the place. They're going to, let me tell you something. They're going to bomb the place. It's going to be the funniest thing ever. They're going to bomb the place. And then after the smoke clear up, <laughs> we're just going to be standing there like, like somebody throw something. <laughs> and then they're going to, and, and they going to kill a lot of themselves just from bombing the place, bro. They're going to kill a lot of themselves from bombing the place. It's just going to be the funniest crap ever. We're just going to be laughing. But we're still going to be just destroying these people, annihilating them. And no weapon formed against us shall prosper. They're going to be shooting us in the head, bullet after bullet. And this stuff is going to be popping off. Like, if, if anything, it's just going to tickle and annoy us. Like, bro, just stop. Just, just stop pulling the trigger, bro. It's just, like, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to really just, just, you know, just piss us off even more. We're just going to start just <laughs> more, k killing you guys even more. And, and that's how powerful we're going to be. Y'all put a spirit on us, we turn into angels, bro. Dead ass. When y'all put his spirit into a human, they turn into an angel. The only difference between a human and an angel is restrictions, limitations. Humans have limitations. When he put your spirit, when he put his spirit on a man, that man have no limitations no more. The only thing a man can't destroy when he got the spirit on him is an angel. That's it. That's it. But he he would be able to destroy any other man and any other beast. Anything, Joel chapter 2, verse 2, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong. Now, what is the morning spread upon the mountains? You know, just picture it in your head. It's a beautiful, you know, mountains. And, you know, the sunrise is all orange. You know, it's all orange. And the orange sky is from one side of the sky to another. You see in that orange is beautiful. That's how the children of Israel is going to be, bro. From one side of the skyline to another horizontally, bro. That's how much it's going to be. That's how much of us is going to be. It's, we're just going to be destroying everything. Now, anyway, it says, a, gr a, a great people and a strong, there have not ever been the like, neither shall there ever be more after, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, 
and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, and nothing shall escape them. So imagine this in your head, bro. This is a visual prophecy. So but be, be, be behind them is ashes and rubble, everything burnt up. And in front of them is everything looking good and normal. That's how it's going to be. We're going to be burning stuff. We're going to be burning stuff. Why? Because we're going to be a heath of fire. And I'm going to show you. Um, but look, let's keep reading. Verse 7 says, They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. Oh, yeah. Verse 4 says, The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen so shall they run. Man, horses are strong, powerful animals. Muscular as hell. That's how we're gonna be, and, and 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 horses run up to sixty miles per hour. That's how fast we're gonna be running. You know when when y'all put his spirit on Elijah, what happened with Elijah? He ran faster than King Ahab. Horses from city to city, nonstop. That's crazy, right? Now, anyway, in verse seven it says, "They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war, and they shall march every one on his way." And they shall not break their ranks. So it's going to be a pure uni unity going on. And there's ranks to this mug. Because you got to understand, Yah is above the whole host. And then uh, right under Yah is, is Michael. Michael the archangel. And he's going to be directing David. And David is going to be directing the house of David. And the house of David is going to be directing Yehuda. And Yehuda is going to be directing the rest of Israel. As we annihilate and destroy the land. Now, anyway, it says, um, neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk everyone his own path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not even be wounded. So what do you see here? Indestructibility. We're not going to be destructible. See, our flesh, at this point, we don't have flesh. At this point, we're not composed of cells anymore. If a sword stab me, I'm not. It's not. I'm not even gonna get stabbed. That's just what it is. And uh, in verse nine, it says, "And they shall run to and fro in the city, and they shall run up the wall and climb upon the houses and enter into the windows like a thief. And the earth shall quake before them, and the shamayim shall tremble, and the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining." Now imagine all this crazy stuff happening and there ain't no light outside. Like, bro, you, you, it's complete darkness. That's how scary it's going to be. In verse 11, it says, And Yah shall utter his voice before his army. Now, I know that sounds scary. It just sounds scary. They, every, ten, every time I read that part, I tremble because I'm like, dang. I just get it. I, something just go in my spine when it say, when it say, And Yah shall utter his voice before his army. Like a battle cry. Like Yah's just, his voice just, you know how powerful Yah's voice is? Anyway, for for his camp is great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of Yahuwah is great and very strong, and who can abide it? Who can abide it for real? That's why Amos said, "Don't don't 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 hope for the day of y'all, bro. You don't want you don't want to experience that, bro." You really don't want to experience that. Not even if you're an Israelite, bro. You don't even want... Like, you're an Israelite, you're going to be fighting that stuff, bro. You're going to be the one fighting, but you still ain't going to be happy. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be scary to you, too. That's how bad it's going to be. For real. The book of Zechariah, chapter 12, verse 5. And the governors of Yehuda shall say in their hearts, The inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength. In Yahuwah Zabuut, their Allah. Now it says, in that day will I make the governors of Yehuda like the hearth of fire among the wood, and like a torch of fire in a shelf, and they shall devour all the people round about, on the right hand and on the left, and Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem. Now look at this. It says the governors of Judah. So the governors of Judah, that means the kings of Judah. The kings of Judah are going to be risen back up, people gonna be risen back up in this time after the exodus and that's the crazy thing and that's the crazy thing about it that shows that souls can be brought back to this earth very easily and uh it said there'll be like a hearth of fire they go just gonna be burning bro bro you you understand the same thing that happened with that burning bush quote unquote aka the burning cactus 
the cactus was burning and not being consumed. Whatever y'all did to that cactus is what he gonna do to you. You understand that? So anyway, any, anyway, um, it says, and y'all also shall save the tents of Yehuda first, that the glory of the house of Dawid and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Yehuda. And in that day shall Yah defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And he that's feeble among them shall be as David. It said, and he that's feeble, that means he that's handicapped with no legs and no arms, shall be like David. That's how powerful people going to get. And the house of David shall be as God. They, then David going to be so strong, they like the Allahim now. Now look, it said in verse 9, and it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Why are they coming against Jerusalem? Because y'all put them in the valley of Jehoshaphat and they mad. They like, man, these people taking my rights away. They ruined my economy. They messed up my life. My life been messed up since COVID and now they did this. Now they gonna be mad, bro. They, you already know the people already trying to fight. They trying to kill. Man, you already know these people already mad at us because Joe Biden is president. They want to they want to kill us just because of that. Imagine what they gonna want to do whenever we actually literally ruin their livelihoods. Uh, yeah, they're gonna want to kill us. So uh, it says, and I will pour upon the house of Dawid and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplications, and they will look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourn for his only begotten son. Obviously, they added some. Uh, they added some goddamn JC stuff in this verse. Pierced and only son and for him. They added that. They, that's not in there. That's not in the original text. All right. But it's basically saying that we will look upon Yah and we will mourn for Yah because of how we disappointed him. We'll realize at this time that Yah is actually a cool guy. He's actually the most kind down down-to-earth person you can meet. Yah is just the best. He's not a person, but he's just the best person to be around. You know, when you're around, when you're around Yah, it's not, it, you're not as scared as what you think, you know. You fear him because he can, you know, take the breath out of your lungs in one second. But you got to understand, he ain't going to do that if you truly love him. You got to understand, at this time, we're going to realize how awesome and how amazing y'all is. And we're just going to be crying. We're going to break down in tears because we really disappointed him as much as we really did. And, and we're going to realize that this is the most merciful thing in all existence. Yahuwah himself. And we, how do, how do we, how do we just happen to anger the most merciful thing in existence? How do we manage to just do that? That's how we're going to be thinking. That's our thought process. So all the, um, all these prophecies are connected. And this is connected directly to Isaiah 66. And watch this. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66, and verse 10. Rejoice ye with Jerusalem. Be glad with her, all ye that love her. Rejoice for joy with her, all ye that mourn for her. You see, they're mourning just like, um, you know, in the last scripture we read, it's connected. Now, then we realize that um, the Holy Land is our mother, right? The whole earth is our mother, technically, but the Holy Land is our mother's breasts. That's why it's called the land of milk and honey. They're breasts, right? So we will go to the land and be comforted. When a baby is born, what happens? Where, where do they go? Do they sit on their mom's leg? Do they play with their mom's head? No, they, they rest on their mom's boobs because... That's where their milk is coming from. That's where their warmth is coming from. That's where the majority of their warmth is. They like that and it relaxes them. They can hear the heartbeat. They can hear all of that. It's, it's a perfect area for them. And that's what our holy land is. The boobs of the earth. That's why people, 
they go west and they're like, man, I love the west. That's why there's so many sign, songs about the west, west side, west coast. You know, people love the west side. And it's bad. It's, my, it's freaking desert nowadays, but it's still a beautiful place. You still feel the frequency of the earth. You still feel the warmth of, the, of your mom's breast. Every time you go there, you feel it. You know? And, and that's what it is. Yeah, the earth is your mother, and you honor your mother. You mourn for her because we missed, we missed, we missed her over. We missed her over, man. Y'all t- taught us how to love the earth, and we did not te- we did not do those commandments. Some of the commandments in Torah specifically are designed so the earth's ecosystems could flow perfect, perfectly, and we did not do it. We did not do it right. We did not do it. We did not listen. We messed it. We messed it up. That's why our land looked like a desert and a patch of dirt nowadays, because we did not let the land keep it savage like we're supposed to. We overworked the land. We did too much bull crap. Uh, it says that ye may suck and be satisfied with the breasts of her constellations, that ye may milk, that ye may milk out and de- be delighted with the abundance of her glory, right? For thus saith Yah, behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. And ye then ye shall suck, and be born upon her sides, and be dandled upon her knees, as one whom his mother comforted. So will I comfort you, and you will be comforted in Jerusalem. And when you see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bones shall flourish like an herb. And the hand of Yah shall be known toward his servants, and his indignation towards his enemies. Behold, Yah will come with fire, and with his chariots like a whirlwind, to render his fury with rebuke and flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword, who is his sword? Israel, will Yah plead with all flesh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. And they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the garden behind one tree in the midst. So he's talking about the Garden of Eden here. He's making a symbol, a symbol just like the Garden of Eden in the midst of the garden behind the tree, eating fruit that we weren't supposed to eat, eating swine's flesh, it says. So another thing we ain't supposed to eat. And the abomination and the mouth shall be consumed together, saith Yah. For I know their works and their thoughts, and it shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. Just like Yah said, he will gather all the nations in the valley of Jehoshaphat. And there will he, there will he make war with the nations, right? And they will see his glory, though. And, and what nation specifically? The, the ruling nation. What's the ruling nation? Verse 19. And I will put a sign among them and those that escape uh, to the nations to Tarshish, Pool, and Lud that draw the bow, the bow to Baal, Javon, the Isles of Far Off. These are the Japhethites, man. These are people that ruin today that have not heard my fame, neither have they seen my glory. They shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. Man, the Japhethites going to be so goddamn amazed when they see this crap. They're going to be like, man, bro, that's cool, dude. But a lot of them going to just die because, you know, they, they ain't even trying. They ain't, gonna, they ain't really going to, they ain't going to really want to give up Christmas. You know how, you know how people, you know how those particular people are about their traditions. They don't, they, they worse than us. They worse than us, bro. I went to school with them and, and trust me, they got traditions and they don't break their traditions at all and when you try to tell them to break their tradition they're gonna think you're taking their rights away it just it, it's bad they they want to bring an ar to school and shoot you so i if I, I know i know they act like that then i know they're gonna act real crazy when y'all say uh look, this is how it's gonna go down and they're gonna perish just like that because they're gonna tell y'all no the people crazy they, they call their mama b words you know they're gonna tell y'all no isaiah chapter 14 and verse 1 for Yah will have mercy on Yahakub, and will choose Yasserah all, and shall set them in their own land, and strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave unto the house of Yahakub. So you understand? Strangers will be joined unto them. But look at this. You know, because some people would choose to just be cleaving unto Israel and keeping the commandments. But some people have to be our servants. Who will be our servants? Let's see. Verse 2, and people shall take them and bring them to the land. The house of Israel shall possess them, 
in the in the land of Yah for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them. They shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. Guess what, man? All the people that try to escape on battle, if we don't feel like killing them right then and there, we'll take them as a servant of war. Just like they took us as servants of war. When we're chasing these people and about to slaughter everybody, we can't kill too many people because we got to have servants. So some of the people, we're going to save them alive. So they didn't want to cleave unto us. We you just gonna be our servant, bro. You just gonna do what we tell you to. And if you don't want to listen, you die too. You, you know, you die. Are we gonna are we gonna be ruling over them too harshly like they did us? Not as harsh. Not as harsh. We're not gonna be raping them and cutting off their balls. Why? Cause that's just inhumane. We don't we don't we don't act like animals like they do. But what we are gonna be doing is doing most of the other stuff that they did to us. Yes, because that's the indignation that y'all has for them. You know, eye for eye, two for two, wound for wound. That's how it works. The book of Isaiah chapter 29 verse 6, Thou shalt be visited of Yah, of hosts, with thunder and with the earthquake and with great noise and with storm and tempest with a flame of devouring fire and the multitude of the nations that fight against Ariel what is Ariel? Ariel is the city of the lion aka Jerusalem even all that fight against her and her munition and all that distress her shall be as a dream of a night vision it shall be as when a hungry man dreameth and behold he eateth but he awaketh and his soul is empty or as when a thirsty man dreameth and behold he drinketh but he awaketh and behold he is faint and his soul hath appetite. So shall the multitude of all the nations be that fight against Mount Zion. So look, simply put, they're going to be mad because they thought they would be able to defeat us. But it's like a dream, bro. No, you ain't going to be able to defeat us. Book of Isaiah 56. Now, this is about the Gentiles who cleave unto Israel, who chose to cleave unto Israel and do all that Yah wanted. And did not even have to argue. They just said, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be a part of this. So this is what it says. Neither let the son of the stranger that have joined himself to Yah speak, saying, Yah hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, behold, I am a dry tree. Verse 6. Also the son of the stranger that joined themselves to Yah to serve him and to love the name of Yah to be his servant. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant, even then will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offering and their sacrifices shall be accepted unto my upon my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Ya Allah, which gathereth the outcast of all Israel, saith, Yet I will gather others to him besides those that are gathered to unto him. So you understand this? Yah is going to, the Gentiles who choose to, to cleave unto us, they're going to be like, dang, they're equals with us, bro. We ain't we ain't going to have no hard feelings toward them. Like, they sacrifice is going to be accepted and everything, you know? Like, it's gonna, they're going to be dang, they one with us. We ain't even going to be treating them no kind of no kind of way. But the servants of war that we capture, that we take captives, real <laughs> we're going to be beating on them, real talk. But uh, that's just how it's going to be Because, you know, wound for wound, bro Wound for wound The book of Isaiah chapter 11, verse 7 And the cow and the bear shall feed And the young ones shall lay down together And the lion shall eat straw like an ox And the sucking child shall play in the hole of an asp And the weaned child shall put his hand In the cockatrice's den And they shall not hurt nor destroy In all my holy mountain For the earth shall be full of knowledge of Yah As the waters cover the sea and in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand as an ensign for the people, to which shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. That's David. So, um, with that being said, yes, it's gonna it's gonna be, you know, one hundred percent peace on this earth. One hundred percent peace on this earth, for real. One hundred percent peace on this earth. After the the battle the, the after the battle is fought. 
after the damage is done and everything burnt up, we're going to go to Jerusalem and we're going to be living so righteously, man. Everything is going to be peaceful. And we're going to really experience the goodness of y'all for real. We, you know, people have bad feelings about y'all for no reason. But people are really going to feel the goodness of y'all for real. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 19. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and, and, and joy, my people. And the voice of weeping shall no more be, be heard in her, nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that have not filled his days. For the child die an hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. So you see, well, I, I just want to go back to verse 20. Like it said, for the child shall die a hundred years old. So, you know, like today, if a child die, you know, like sudden infant death syndrome or some stuff like that, or miscarriage or stillbirth, it's sad, right? Y'all says at this time, if that happened, they're going to die a hundred. That's how old they're going to be if they die. Now look, it said, and they shall build houses and have in them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build in another inhabit. They shall not plant in another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people. And you know, we got we got trees in America living 5,000 years old, right? And mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. For they are the seed of the blessed of Yah, and their offspring with them. And it will come to pass that before they call, I will answer. So y'all say, before we pray, I will answer. And, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. And the wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like a bullock, and the dust shall be the serpent's meat. And they shall not hurt nor destroy at all in my holy mountain, saith Yah. This whole world is going to be perfection, man perfection now why are we gonna be living so long and why is our days gonna be the days of a tree because it says right here in enoch chapter 24 and he answered me saying that mountain which thou seest the extent of whose head resembles that resembles the seat of yah will be the seat on which shall sit the holy and the great lord of glory the everlasting king when he shall come and descend to visit the earth with goodness and that tree of an agreeable smell, not one of a carnal odor, there shall be no power to touch until the period of great judgment when all shall be punished and consumed forever. This fruit shall be bestowed upon the righteous and the humble. The fruit of this tree shall be given to the elect for towards the north life shall be planted in the holy place towards the habitation of the everlasting king. So y'all is going to take this tree from the north place and plant it in the holy place, right? Then it says in verse 10, Then shall they greatly rejoice and exult in the holy one. The sweet odor shall enter into their bones, and they shall live a long life on the earth as their forefathers have lived. Neither in their days shall sorrow, distress, trouble, and punishment afflict them. So do you see this? This is about the fruit of the tree of life that we will actually eat. And we will eat and it will go into our bones. You know, inside of our bones, there's bone marrow, which makes our blood. And the blood is life. So with that being said, we will live for a long time because y'all will take the tree of life and plant it in Jerusalem and we will eat it. We'll be eating that mug, man. We love that stuff. We're going to be eating and enjoying it. We're going to be living for a long time, for real. So with that being said, fam, I hope you learned something. Shalom, Ubarakah, Miss Pacquiao. Peace and blessings, family.